Recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman Yahoo, the Israel, also known as Pastor Derek Mann, on the early YCP Soup study and prayer line on this 21st day in June um, 2018. <sighs> Excuse me, y'all. Uh, let's dive on into the word. Um, what am I going to teach y'all? <sighs> um, let's go to First uh, Timothy. Let's go to First uh, Timothy six, six and twelve. And look what it's saying. Look what it's saying. It says, "Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Run to thou." art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Um, when we, when we, when we, um, understand you know what what salvation is all about again trying to graduate from a churchy state of mind right the social club center great musician um state of mind and start dealing with the actuality of what salvation really is about Salvation is to be rescued, and you got to understand what you're being rescued from. Uh, so to get the revelation that you're rescued from the consequences of sin, and to realize um, being rescued from the consequences of sin, does sin still remain in place? and you're just rescued from the consequences of your actions or to be rescued from the consequences of sin is actually being rescued from sin itself. Because if you're rescued from sin itself, the problem, which is sin, then of course by default you're rescued from the consequences of sin. And the consequences of sin is um, death, eternal damnation. Now, there's a theological position that would offer one being rescued from the consequences of sin, yet while still sinning, <laughs> uh, which goes against uh, Scripture because. Uh, the, the, the word teaches that Yahushua is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Getting the revelation on who and what Yahushua is. Um, again, you go to Yachanan 1, they call him John 1. But in the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah and the word was Yah. Skipping down to the 10th verse, it said he was in the world and the world was made by him. And we know uh, that Yah is the one that made the world. How did he make it? He made it by his word. He spoke. <laughs> That's not a separate entity. He spoke. And then equating in the 14th verse, it said, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us as we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of what they call grace and truth. So, um, He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. The word. The word has gone out of his mouth and will not return unto him void. But will accomplish what he sent it to do. 
The word is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Now, looking at it uh, spiritually, how you doing, uh, Jamesa? But looking at it for what it really is, right? Um, everything the Most High created, he created by his word. If we're going to be created, we're going to be created by his, his word. His word is so strong that it went into darkness and created light. He said, let there be light, and light came forth. Because life is in the power of the word. Now you got to pay attention to the fact that when uh, the Most High told Adam not to eat of the tree, and he did anyway, automatically, that's death. Automatically. Because to go against the word is death. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. When you look at uh, the job of the serpent, the serpent came and he wanted to convince Eve to go against the word, convincing her that there would be a benefit and that she would not surely die. Well, we know that that was a lie and she surely died. And when her, at, when, when her husband went along with it, then death was passed on to all humanity. Well, going down 42 generations and the word becoming flesh, becoming a human being, Yah being found fashioned as a man, according to Philippians, the second chapter, and humbling himself and become obedient, um, even on the death, on that struos, on that, on that beam, the pole, a.k.a. Um, scripturally, the tree. Dying for... Mankind living the perfect example of coming in the volume of the book to obey the word, to fulfill the word, dying on that tree for our sins, rising up again uh, for our justification, then baptizing himself inside of us without the body um, to lead and guide us, um, you know, by the word. So to set the record straight, then. The word is still the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And we must now be governed by the word. The Ruach HaKadosh, the spirit of the word living inside of us, instructing us to become obedient. Now, our sinful nature fights against that. It goes against it. But we're taught clearly, uh, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself. It takes self-denial to live this life. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself. When you take that as a suggestion, you're, you're, you're deceiving yourself. You have to deny oneself. And you can't be surprised because of the urges. Because something is pulling on you, trying to get you to go against the word. Don't be surprised. Don't Think you're an alien or a devil. Don't think that you don't belong to Yah because of the temptation and the urge to go against him. That's why Shaul, they call him Paul, y'all. And Romans the seventh chapter said, when I would do good, evil is present. Something is pulling on you. You're getting sick and tired of some things. They are attractive to you. They don't belong to you, but they're attractive to you. You got to fight against the urge to act a fool, uh, to become unfaithful. It's a fight. That's where we're going with this lesson, right? When you're offered a gospel that relieves you from the war or the fight, what causes you then have to ignore the terms like, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, the war, you know, that you might please him that has called you to be a, a soldier. What does all this soldier talk about? What is all this fight, the good fight of faith and lay hold on to eternal life? Why is these terms there? If Jesus did it all and it's all good. What, 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 am I, what am I fighting for? Why would I be fighting if one save always say? What, what, what is all this fighting for? I got it on lock. I, I can kick back now. 
<laughs> but since the 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 new messiah the new gospel is being offered in these last and evil days is deceptive it's a new gospel that's offered that actually came from in the garden i got to always go back to the beginning y'all i i got to go back to the original problem the original problem is disobeying yah and then I got to go back to the original deception to trick mankind into believing if I go against Yah, I'm going to be okay. That's the issue that we're dealing with right here. The serpent was able to attach his doctrine to the gospel through Catholicism, through the, 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 the truth of the word being tainted, <laughs> being tainted. And 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 shifted into a a, a gospel priest that thou shall not surely die. Well, we know that that's a lie because the wages of sin is death, and again, he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And for one to accept a a, a gospel that relieves us from the responsibility or what the gospel really is, if you have revelation that the gospel is the death burial and resurrection then the added revelation now should be that it's also your death burial and resurrection according to Romans the sixth chapter shall we continue in sin that uh, grace may abound Yah forbid no no you not that so many of us were baptizing into Yahusha was baptized into his death we were baptized into his death as well. We were buried by baptism into death. And like as he was raised up by the power of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. So now it's our responsibility to walk in the newness of life. But do your carnal nature walk in the newness of life? Well, Romans the 8th chapter said the carnal mind is enmity against Yah. It's not subject to the law of Yah, neither indeed can be. We got a nature that will not bow down to Yah. It said it, it can't. It's impossible. Corinthians 2 and 14 say the natural man received not the things of the spirit of Yah. Their foolishness on him, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. So there's a part of you that will not get saved. That's why the word told you to assassinate it. It says, mortify the deeds of the flesh. You got to kill it. AKA, don't go commit suicide, y'all. You got to kill you. You got to literally die daily like Saul said. They call him Paul, y'all. But you got to die daily in going against yourself. You have to. Galatians teaches the fifth chapter, right? It says, uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another. So you cannot do what you want to do. When you deal with carnal believers, they're caught up in doing what they want to do regardless of what the word tell them to do and what substantiates that then is false doctrine what substantiated Eve to go against the most high was listening to the spirit of the devil and he convinced her that she would benefit by going against the most high not only would she benefit and become wise, but then he nullified the consequence. You shall not surely die. So when doubt set in and she figured, well, not only will I not die, but it will be exactly the opposite. I'll benefit. I'll benefit from sleeping with them. I won't be lonely no more. I'll benefit from being unequally yoked together with the unbeliever because he's buff. She's fine. Look at her. She's shaped like a Coke bottle. And I'm tired of being lonely. I'll benefit. I'll benefit for forsaking the assembling. I need some me time. You know, I need to just to get away. 
not realizing that the consequence of disobedience to the Most High on, not only uh, equates to death at the end, but equates to death now. There's consequences from going against Yah. See, we think that Yah came to take our life. But he came to give it to us more abundantly. But through the dece deceitfulness of the enemy, he will convince you that you will benefit. You'll benefit from going against the most. Don't believe the hype. Do not believe the hype. If the word is able to penetrate and get down in your soul to the point that you're willing to go through the discomfort of obeying. Go through the, the, the inconveniences of obeying, then you'll reap life everlasting at the end. And there's also a benefit now that's hidden. Oh, it looks good to obey the devil. It looks gratifying right now. But the end thereof is the ways of death. Don't you believe it? Don't you believe the high running off at the mouth? Uh, 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 laying up with folks, getting high and drunk, uh, seeking to save your life. You wouldn't seek to save your life unless you believe you really was going to rescue yourself and save your life. And it's because of the deceitfulness of sin that causes you to believe that that can happen. Oh, come on, somebody. When you, when you conclude that the word is right, and obeying the word will supply eternal life, will cause you to grit your teeth, because he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. There is some immediate suffering to the flesh, to your carnal nature that occurs when you obey the word. If you can convince yourself to trust Yah, to believe his word, to believe it's going to come to pass, that the word has gone out of his mouth and will not return on him void, but will accomplish what he sent it to do, then you set up to win. Because now you can perform 1 Timothy 6 and 12, which says, fight the good fight of faith. Now, in order to fight, you got to know what you're fighting. Uh, and it's faith. This is a faith fight. This is not a carnal fight. And so you got to know what faith is. Faith is the substance. It's the it's the substance of things hoped for. It's is 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 faith is the response that you have because of what you're hoping for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. What is invisible, the unseen, is uh uh um uh the what you're hoping for. You can look at me all you want. You don't know what I'm hoping for unless I have faith. And faith is the evidence of what I'm hoping for. In other words, if I'm hoping for a paycheck, then the evidence would be I would work. It's the substance. It's the tangible um, action that's attached to what I'm hoping for. If I'm hoping for eternal life and I'm able to rightly divide the word of truth, then my faith would be obedience to the word. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence, it's the proof, it's the tangible proof of what I'm hoping for. If I'm hoping for eternal life, and Yah is that eternal life, walking in obedience is the eternal life, then I will perform the obedience. Ah. So to fight the good fight of faith, it's a fight too. It's a fight to obey the most high. It's a, it's a fight to, to study, uh, to show yourself approved on the Yah, workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a fight to come out from among them and be separate, to detach yourself from a, a religious system. I don't want a religious system. I want relationship. I want to walk in accordance to the word. I want to regurgitate and throw up all that Catholicism. It's not easy. How you think Shaul feel? They call him Paul, y'all. How he felt on the road to Damascus fighting against truth, believing that he was right, met the true word on that road, knocked off his donkey, and then, and then, and then had to be rescued. Ananias had to come down and pray for him that the scales, the religious scales, the blindness of religion would fall off his eyes. 
And when the, when the scales fell off his eyes, he then was faced with some religious folks that he was raised with. <laughs> in religion, fighting against truth. How you think he felt? They had to lure him out of the city, hiding him in a basket because the people he was raised with in religion wanted to kill him because he received truth, the inconvenience. The inconvenience of, of, of studying and finding out that the, the, the pagan roots of, of Christmas and, 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 and Easter and, 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 and all these pagan rituals coming out from among them, looking like a bad guy. Uh, being treated like a bat is the truth anyhow, y'all. We got to somehow come out of religion and get in the truth, and it's a fight. Not only do we have to do that, but just the day-to-day -day operations of dealing with you. Too many people that's serving him, that's committing adultery, that's committing fornication, that's smoking cigarettes, that's getting high and getting drunk, that will get upset and cuss you out having a form of yalliness but denying the power thereof up under the influence of a gospel that tells you that you're a sinner saved by grace, which is an oxymoron. The wages of sin is death. And it was death even in the beginning. What makes you think it changed? Because the devil has attached you shall not surely die like he did in the garden to your belief system today. He, he, he's the same too. <laughs> He hasn't changed. His theological position hasn't changed, but you best believe, nor has Yas, nor has the Creator. Neither one of them changed. They both locked in. <laughs> they both locked in for the long haul, but the deceitfulness of Satan in these last and evil days. Come on, somebody. You got to fight the good fight of faith to obey the Most High. The Word tells you to mortify the deeds of the flesh which means to kill the deeds of the flesh. Oh, there's a way to seem right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. There ain't no goody two-shoes here, and the word tells us we can't add to the word, and we can't take away. He said, if you add to the word, he'll add the plagues in the book to you, and if you take away, he'll take your name out of the Lamb's book of life. You got to leave it the way it is because a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. We got to learn how to walk in obedience to the word of Yah. We got to learn how to obey. And it is a war. It is a fight. That's why he say fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on to eternal life. You got to grab this joker and not let it go. You got to go against oneself. You got to be able to resist. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It says, submit yourself unto Yah and resist the devil and he'll flee. You can't just resist him on your own accord. You got to be leaning on the word. You got to grab that word. You got to take that word and hide it in your heart that you might not sin against him. How am I supposed to live? Am I goody two shoes now? Can I live like Casper the Friendly Ghost? Be a nicer person? Can I treat it like it's a social club? Is having a relationship with the Most High a good choir and a bunch of singing? Flopping around and hopping and praising Him, but yet still doing me? Come on, somebody. We got to break the curse. We got to break the curse of believing that I can live any kind of way and still have a relationship with Him. Well, then what the heck is this fight talk about? Come on, somebody. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You got to learn how to endure temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, when he is tested, he shall receive a crown of life, which Yah has promised to them that love him. And if you love him, do what he say. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We got to get that in our spirit. He got me redundant because we've been Catholicized. We've been taught and conditioned that we're, 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 we're only human. And that's why the Most High uh, 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 was found fashioned as a man to rescue us from our humanism. And you got to get that in your spirit. Yeah, you're going to be tempted. Yeah, you're going to have cravings. Yeah, you're going to get angry. The word said be angry and sin not. You're going to have to learn how to watch your mouth. Let not filthy communications proceed out of your mouth. Is that a suggestion or is that a commandment? Come on, somebody. 
We got to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on to eternal life. You do not forgive me and their trespasses, neither will your heavenly father forgive you yours. You, we live in a life where folks is going to do wrong. Going to do you wrong. You got to understand this. You can't go to rescue deer that's trapped on ice and not be equipped to rescue deer trapped on ice. You, you come up to the deer and the deer see you. Now the deer is looking at you like you come to eat him. You got to know that. And as you get closer, he begin to try to get away. And his knees will break. His, his legs could break on that eye. So he's slipping and sliding. You know you only have a certain amount of time to get to the deer before he hurt himself. So you approach the deer to try to get close to the deer. And the closer you get, the bigger his eyes get in fear. So when you go to grab the deer, the deer then try to get away and kick you and bust you in the nose. Your nose start bleeding. You take a step back, pull your pistol out, and kill the deer. You should have known before you approach the deer, the deer don't know your intentions. And you shouldn't expect it to know your intention. It's a deer. If you went to rescue the deer, you should be able to get kicked in the nose and still stay on your post, still walk in the spirit of love and still do what you're supposed to do. People believe that because the demographic that they're ministering to should be example to go against them, lie on you, want to smoke the joint with you, want to sleep with you or straight up punch you in your nose. You got to walk in the spirit of selflessness, in the spirit of love, knowing that he has saved you to be able to save others. And you got to be equipped. You can't be carnal too. Someone you're trying to help and save go against you and now you're holding a grudge. Now you don't walk in love. Now you don't want to fellowship with them. You don't, you don't want to have nothing to do with them. You might, you might talk a good game, but your actions will tell them, come on, somebody. When you're dealing with people, you're dealing with people and they're broken. I'm not talking about people that should be with it. It's time out for us classifying ourselves as the broken, as the ones that need. It's time for us to grow up because when you first come to him, you're, you're desiring the sincere milk of the word. But when you grow up, you should become mature to where the most high can trust you, where he can give you assignment to go out in the highways and the hedges and compel people to come because we should uh, be, become the head and not the tail. And the head is the influencer, not the influenced. We should become the one that's leading and not following. It's the truth anyhow. It's time for us to grow up. In order for us to grow up, you got to be willing to fight the good fight of faith. And be successful at it. Not complimenting yourself on fighting, but you keep losing. You keep sleeping with them. You keep cussing them out. You keep getting drunk. You keep getting high. You, you keep forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. You should become faithful. You should become a faithful supporter of a real ministry. The supporter of truth. Physically and financially. You should, you should grow up. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight. Don't you dare look in the mirror and call yourself uh, uh, the devil because uh, you tempted. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So that lets you know that you are going to be tempted. You're going to get tempted. Get to doubting your salvation because you're tempted. Or equating temptation with sin which gives you a license to sin because now you equate yourself as a hopeless sinner. No, being tempted is just a test. Blesses the man that endureth temptation for when he is tested, when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which Yah has promised to them that love him. You need to learn how to fight because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah to the pulling down a stronghold. Let me go. You're not going to control my life. I might be tempted, but I ain't doing it. Um, the carnal mind is enmity. How I feel about it is enmity against Yah. That's why I'm going to be like the Mashiach that said, not my will, but thy will be done. 
Yeah, you might look good, but I can't do it. Yeah, I'm getting sick of you, but I can't hold the grudge. Yeah, I get tired of assembling, but I got to show up or blow up. I got to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold onto the eternal life, which also we are called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Too many people heard you calling on his worthy name. Too many people heard you. Too many people, you want to holler, y'all bless you, and, 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 and how are you today? Oh, I'm blessed. Too many people heard you talk it. Now it's time to walk it. Come on, somebody. I'm sad that this is Sermon Net because every time I'm on Facebook, I want to keep going. But <sighs> in my closing, I want to go. <sighs> but in my closing, we got to fight the good fight of faith. Listen, listen. I know I'm a little over time right now, but listen, listen. Fighting the good fight of faith. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. You're hoping to be with Yah. You're hoping to walk pleasing in His sight. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. It's the evidence. It's the action. It's I will not cuss you out. The action of what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to be like Yah. I'm hoping to go through the metamorphosis process and become like my daddy. He didn't have this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure. That's the faith. What I do, faith without works is dead. If I don't have the evidence, then my faith means nothing. Come on, somebody. Do not let this Catholicism, this last day false doctrine of attaching you shall not surely die. It came from the snake in the beginning, attached with the truth of the gospel. You got to learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. You got to learn how to fight the good fight of faith. You got to fight to keep faith. You got to grit your teeth. Because he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. You got to shake yourself. You don't want to become religious. Come on, somebody. You got to, he that seek to save his life is going to lose it. You got to let this life go that you might find it. And you got to let it go for him. You can't get tricked into putting carnal things. Ah, oh, I want to keep going, but religious folks got a way of hurting you and causing you to withdraw, even causing you to withdraw from your assignment, even causing you to attach yourself to your to your carnal family as opposed to the family of Yah based on the wounds. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. You got to fight. You got to remember the call. You got to remember the assignment. Because he to seek to save his life is going to lose. You got to remember the sign. First seek ye the kingdom of Yah. What does that look like? First seek ye the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness. Everything, his whole program. All this other stuff is secondary. It'll be added. Don't you get it twisted. Don't you get it twisted because the devil's a liar. He's a liar. He will knock the fight out of you by replacing it with a new agenda, with a new gospel. A gospel that will promise you eternal life, but it's going to deliver death. That's why you got to fight. Spirit of living, y'all, we love you and thank you for the sermon that on this morning. Praying that your word will forth with clarity, falling down the souls of your children, springing up an everlasting life. I am so hurt, y'all. I wanted to keep going, uh, but uh, bless your people. You love them. You came down 42 generations, robed yourself as a man to be our perfect example. You were the perfect example. Then you died on that tree uh, for your people. You rose with all power in your hand and came back, baptized yourself inside of us without the body to lead and guide us, deliver us blameless and faultless before your presence as we give you the praise and honor, not only now but forevermore, in the matchless name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we only pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Listen, y'all. We're on the line right now, and we're on the line Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., and we pray together, and then we get into a sermonette like I just did now. After the sermonette, what we do is we do commentary, and we encourage one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. We take turns uh, speaking on the lesson, what we got out of it, and um, you're welcome to join us. We're on the conference line at 302 202-1102, extension 815648. Again, 302-202-1102, extension 815648. Hope to see you um, on the line. Now listen, 
Witnessing is one of the easiest things we can do now. We used to all the time go door to door and all that. Sometimes get a dog chasing you, get cussed out and the door slammed in your face. Get off my porch. But now all you got to do is push share. If the message was true and it blessed you, I'm sure you know it will bless somebody else. If you did not hear the message in its entirety, all you got to do is push play again. It's on Facebook Live. And if it's true, push share. I dare you to push share in Yahusha's name. Come on to the line. Hang out with us. We'd love to have you. Again, 302-202-1102, extension 815-648. Thanks for hanging out. We'll be back on tonight. Tonight at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. This time, I ain't going to have to stop. Y'all pray for me as I pray for you. Y'all be Baruch and Baraka Shalom.